Well, here we are again. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the journey of turning a, a cheap two-ton bottle jack into a power drawbar. It finally works. I've reassembled the um, actuator, installed it all, made some changes. You'll see that in the upcoming video. Roll the titles and I'll see you on the other side. Oops. It's uh, reassembled, I'll just uh, uh, show you, it does work, but uh, that dodgy tooth in there is making it click a bit. We'll ignore that I think. It uh, works quite happily, I changed the connections over, it works quite happily in both directions. There we go. Um, right, I'll just put it out more or less in the middle. Move it out a bit. That'll do. Right, let's put this back in the frame. Now, really cheap O-rings, not O-rings, circlips. There you go, it's not coming off. Right, let me explain why I've done this the way I have and what changes I'm going to make, uh, hopefully to improve it. Um, the, this um, 
uh, linear actuator can rotate the the, the this is threaded this um, um, tube the hydraulic uh, ram can rotate they can all rotate so you can have this situation which means that the um, putting a, a, a physical switch to using this as a physical switch to um, stop the the actuator at either end of its movement um, is a bit tricky so uh, because it could rotate and then not actuate it so what I did was I used these these are um, reed switches this thing here is a magnet so um, it's not powered up at the moment so you can't see it but uh, and these um, printed blocks just sit in the right you can move them so that you can get the right distance of travel that works okay however there's an inherent problem with reed switches uh, I've I've got one on the door to the factory at work uh, and every time you open the door it goes bing bong to let you know somebody's arrived never been a problem I've had these sort of magnet uh, these sort of reed switches where they're magnetically operated switches basically um, where they jam on and these are no different um, so you can get in a situation where it jams on also because of the hysteresis in the things they take quite the, the magnet once it's activated it has to be quite a way away from it before it turns it off so there's a, a level of indeterminacy Ooh, I like that. that's a good word I'll write that down there's a level of indeterminacy between um, what's going on and or what the 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 um, Arduino in here knows what what's going on with this with this uh, actuator because both switches could be triggered at the same time that's bad news so this is what I'm going to do I have machined up whoops a new pin to go through here that's going to constrain this so it won't be able to move <coughs> I just changed to the other side here. I've cut out an acrylic plate that sits on like so. This slot is longer than the travel that this thing, than the actuator can uh, accommodate. So, as there's a piece poking through the end here, I can use a physical switch again. All right, just knocked it on the floor, but here we go. Uh, so, I can use, if I put that back on there, you'll see I can use a physical switch. Now I've used these in the past uh, with a reasonable amount of success. It's a it's a normal micro switch with a long tang on it, and you can bend the tang to make them work where you want them. So all I need to do is determine where they need to go and fit them on on here at the top and the bottom, and that should give me a proper physical switch on and switch off with known hysteresis, which then means that the Arduino isn't going to get some key so confused. What? That should be tapped M3. Right, that explains that picked up the wrong tap. This is an M3.5 and this is an M3 screw. Not going to fit. So we'll have to put a nut on the other side. I've um, temporarily clamped the uh, the top limit switch in with a um, toolmaker's clamp. Uh, I think I might fit it there, but we'll see. Um, so if I jump on the foot switch, uh, we're not connected anywhere, but I'll show you this. This is the actuator. Actuator's moving out. Power switch, power switch goes down. We have a flashy, flashy LED on the control panel. And if I take my foot off the uh, foot switch, It'll go back, this will shrink in again, and it should go up to the top and hit the stop. Fantastic. 
Well, uh, after a, what seems like a lifetime, uh, we've finally got the blasted thing back together again. Uh, the actuator is, uh, is, is reassembled with its new gear. Um, that's put back and I've made some changes to how the, um, uh, the limit switches work on, um, on the... Um, so effectively we, can only, we only need to drive the power cylinder for about four or five millimetres. That's more than enough. Um, so I've reduced the amount of travel on it by reducing the amount of travel on the drive cylinder. So um, I'll show you a close-up of that and you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Okay, excuse the handheld. Um, there we have switches that are um, micro switches that have long tabs to operate them. They're quite useful for this sort of thing because you can bend the tabs to, to move them, move the actuating point to where you would like it. So um, yeah, hopefully um, this should work. What I'll do is show you. Just to make things easier, I'll do this as a quad split so you can see exactly how this thing operates because there's, there's two modes. Um, one non-latching when you put your foot on the uh, pedal and the other one's latching when you press the key on the keyboard. Uh, let me show you that again. If I press the button, there you go. You can walk away with the drawbar open and the LED on the and the key switch flashes to show you that uh, um, it's open. So if I put the tool back in, press the button, it'll latch it in. There you go, fully latched. And uh, the last thing, uh, the next thing I should show you, not the last thing, the next thing I should show you is this. If I turn on M3, turn the spindle on, you're locked out. That won't work. Neither will the foot switch. Oh. M5, stop the, stop the spindle. Now it works. There you go. Right, thanks for watching. Hopefully um, that explains it. I think that's uh, a worthwhile project. It's taken forever to do um, because of the various difficulties I've been having trying to get enough sufficient force to push the tool out. Uh, one and a half tonnes this thing can generate, which is phenomenal really. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we've had umpteen different iterations. Those of you who followed this series will see that will have seen that I've tried four or five different methods of doing this. This, I think, is the most likely to give you success. It's also the easiest, I think. However, you, you do have to give up a certain amount of space because um, you need some form of actuator outside or off, off the mill. You couldn't hang this amount of weight on the top of it. It'd just, it'd just be a nonsensical thing to do. Um, so, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit the bell and subscribe banner and uh, we'll see you on the next one. But uh, in the meantime, the only thing I've got left to do with this is to move the control panel back to where it go, it's supposed to go, put the uh, drawbar bits around the back, because who wants to see that is dull, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching, uh, I seriously appreciate it, and uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also, I will post the code up for the Arduino in here. Um, there's no circuit diagram as yet uh, and there's no um, schematic for the drawbar as such at the moment but it's coming, you bear with me, I've been quite busy but uh, we'll get to it. Thank you, take care and stay safe. At last. <laughs>